What the hell is this? The moment I saw what was inside the box, I instantly felt the blood rush away from my face and my heart began to pound. I quickly closed the box, marched into the kitchen and threw the whole present in the trash, box and all. What are you doing? You can't throw away my son's present. Mr. Spencer, please have a look at what's inside. At my words, my concerned father-in-law picked up the little black box from the trash, eyed it for some time, and then opened it up. His face turned bright red with fury. You gosh damn bastard! How freaking dare you do this to her! This is the story of how my husband, a kind, long man once upon a time, gradually declined in terms of humanity and common sense, and how an unalterable occurrence caused him to do something that would ultimately render his life a veritable masterpiece of misery. My name is Danny Spencer, and I'm a 28-year-old housewife. I've been married to my husband, Lee, for four years. I initially met him five years ago at the company I worked for before. He originally worked in a different department, but was eventually transferred to the department where I worked at that time. Being on the road to becoming a successful office woman myself, I volunteered to teach him how to do the job. It really helped that he already had some knowledge of the company and its systems, and within a week, he was doing everything very well. Another reason why I volunteered to help him, and why I had to fight hard to be given that responsibility, was also because I found him attractive. He had a face that looked as though he was of Chinese descent, and because of his name, I was certain he was. He had a very charming personality, and above all else, he made my cheeks hurt with how much he made me smile. I don't know what it was exactly, but something about his language and his tone didn't make me laugh per se, unless it was genuinely funny. But it just, it just sounded nice. And I wanted to talk with him all day long, if that was possible. Perhaps my help really came off as a good impression because about a month after we started working together, he confessed he had feelings for me. He asked me out on a nice dinner and I immediately accepted. Things snowballed and just one year later, we were married. Quick jump into the realm of the betrothed, I know, but I thought I would be happy with him for all my life. My income alone will be enough to live on. I want you to stay at home and take care of it, if you don't mind. Per Lee's request, I chose to retire from my job and become a housewife, and so began my new life as a newlywed. I was happy for a while, but there was one thing that bothered me. That was my relationship with Whitney, my mother-in-law. To be honest, from the moment I went to greet her at the wedding, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get along with her. She looked at me with such a raw feeling of resentful coldness that was really quite something. Since Lee was an only child, I could only imagine Whitney must have felt frustrated that her only son, her only child, would be taken away from her. I couldn't really blame her for that, but I could tell from her every word that she was extremely protective of her son. And my fears of what would happen later on, after I got accustomed to marriage, proved to be right. Whitney would often come to our house and say things along the lines of, the way you fold your laundry is wrong. It's not the same as mine. Redo all of them right now. And then she would scatter all the laundry all over the floor. But why? Another time along the lines of, What the hell is up with this excuse of an omelet? Throw it away and make another one. It doesn't taste like ours. It's not at all like the salty taste my son likes. Oh no. And she never even tasted it. In a nutshell, Whitney would say that everything I did was not right at all. And she would say something to criticize my housework every time she visited the house. This happened many, many times during the first few months of marriage, and every time I came was with my mother-in-law, she became more and more difficult to deal with. Looking back now, I do realize that I should have been stronger against her at the time. I should have told her that I had my own way of doing things, and that because this was my house along with Lee's, my house, my rules. But at the time, I thought that since I had only been married for a short time, I should not make any problems for fear of destroying something precious after such a short time. And along with that, I made another discovery that was not good news for me. I also noticed Lee's attitude towards what I believed was a genuine problem. He almost always turned a blind eye to his mother's unfairness toward me. I once asked him for help. Can't you do something about your mother, Lee? His reply made me think that I would rather he turn a damn blind eye than say something ridiculous like that. Why can't you just listen to mom when you know she's going out of her way to give you advice so kindly? You're my wife, and it's only obvious that when it comes to a wife's word against a mother's, the latter always prevails. I was so dumbfounded that I couldn't find the words to reply. After that, whenever Lee opened his mouth, he just kept on stating in different ways, 
using morally harassing words, that Whitney's word was absolute in the house as long as she was there. In the meantime, he quit his job and started his own business based on the know-how he had acquired through his old job. This had been his dream for a long time, so I did my best to help him start his own business. Running his own business was not an easy task, not by a long shot. And for the first year, the unstable income put pressure on the family budget. However, after months of work and continued resilience, hope, his efforts paid off, and the business got off the ground. Right about when this story escalated, Lee's salary had doubled that of when he was working for his old office. A few months after he got his new company off the ground, I found out I was pregnant. When I told my husband about this, he was very happy. And Whitney was too. I'm going to be a grandmother? I can't wait to see my first grandchild, my mother-in-law said, jumping and swaying her arms joyfully. After we found out I was pregnant, Lee became much nicer to me than ever before, and he even helped with the housework himself, telling me to take it easy, to rest whenever I didn't feel well, etc., etc., etc. Whitney also frequently brought baby items and gave them to me as gifts. I was relieved that I would no longer have to deal with her harassment and my husband's selfishness in taking mommy's side. But that happiness didn't last long. When I was in my fifth month of pregnancy, I found out the sex of the baby from an ultrasound taken at a medical checkup. And as soon as I walked in through the front door, I reported it to my husband. Hey, honey, I have some news. I know the sex of our beautiful child. Ah, about time. Well, come on. Tell me we're getting a son. Uh, actually, we're having a daughter, Lee. What? Why? What do you mean, why? I mean, why not? Of course. It's a girl because it's not like I can work magic and make it a boy. Why not a boy, though? I can't let a stupid daughter inherit my business if she's gonna go marry a man. I don't want the damn thing if it's not a freaking boy. I was absolutely appalled. How can you say that? Doesn't matter what sex a child is. Then Lee raised his eyebrows at me as if I was crazy. And what are you talking about? A woman becoming my heir? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in a damn while. That's for sure. A man who goes out, works hard, and makes enough money to support his wife and children is a much better asset to the family. I just stood there, dumbfounded, at all the heartless comments emanating from my actual husband's mouth. He used to be such a sweet, kind, charming man. What kind of warthog face swamp monster was I talking to here? I didn't know a lot of things right then, but one was certain. This was not the man that I'd hoped to spend the rest of my life with. I had no idea that he felt that way about sexes and children. At that moment, I was so angry that my body shook. To make matters worse, it seemed that my mother-in-law had heard about the news that very same day because she called me out of the blue. What are you trying to accomplish giving birth to a daughter? You realize Lee's company is going strong and you want to interfere with that by letting this thing into the world? Unacceptable. Whitney also spoke harshly about the fact that my baby turned out to be a girl. I was stunned by her words and was disgusted by the two traders' insistence on a male heir and their refusal to be happy that the baby was a girl. I began to feel stressed about it and made it of paramount importance that I keep my distance from Lee and his traitorous mother so as not to influence the baby in a negative way. However, I had not yet decided on a name for the child, so I decided to ask Lee for any suggestions. What should we name our daughter, Lee? When I asked him this, he answered in a tedious manner. I don't freaking care. Why don't you do whatever you freaking want? Since you seem to want to bear the bitch, you name the stupid thing. Y you you how dare you? What does it matter what her name is, eh? She's still gonna be a freaking girl. It's none of my damn business. Tears welled up in my eyes as I heard those soul-piercing words. My chest tightened and I ran out of the room crying. I promised myself that I would never talk to him about her again. From then on, Lee and I talked less and less. Even so, he never stopped blurting out his sarcastic aspersions towards me. I can't have any good chemistry with that stupid excuse of an executive, for real. I was thinking of making my son my right-hand man someday. But if you hadn't decided to bear a daughter, we wouldn't be worried about the future of the company right now, would we? You're just adding unnecessary worries to my frickin' busy schedule. You're a stay-at-home mom, but instead of supporting my work, you're getting in my way. I don't know what you're enjoying. Lee said in a voice too loud for a soliloquy. I just pretended to not hear him and let him get on with his ridiculous ranting. Then, Whitney even said something even more unbelievable, directly to my face. Just freaking forget the girl. Have a boy already. If it's not a boy, what's the point of having any children, Danny? Every time she saw me at home, she was like this. The moment she laid her eyes on me, 
She was reminded of the somehow scandalous decision of bearing the child anyway, despite her being a daughter instead of a son, and she would go on to insist that I bear a boy as soon as possible. To insist on a male lineage nowadays is quite an anachronism for anyone, let alone parents with a grandchild on the way. I couldn't and I wouldn't answer. Yes, I understand to that bitch. I kept giving vague answers, and each time I saw Whitney, I felt more and more disgusted with her. I managed to keep my spirits up by complaining about them both in my child-rearing diary, which I started keeping after I got pregnant. As I endured these days, I finally gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. When I held her in my hands for the first time, I felt happiness that was impossible to be put to words. I named my beautiful daughter Aurora after my wishes for her to have the brightest, most wonderful life the world has to offer. After leaving the hospital, a party was held in my parents-in-law house to celebrate the birth of my baby girl. It seemed that it was Whitney who had come up with the idea. When I heard about it from Lee, I smiled and said, despite all those hurtful things she said, she's still so happy to have her first grandchild, isn't she? Lee must have been pleased inside too, for he agreed to the idea. I was so happy to hold my own child in my arms that I strangely thought of the two traders in such an optimistic way. On the day of the party, we were invited to my parents-in-law's house with our baby Aurora. When I opened the door to the living room, a sumptuous meal was laid out on the dining table. This is lovely. Thank you so much. You guys are the stars of the show today. We got a delivery from a famous restaurant. It looks amazing. Bon appetit. When my father and I were having a friendly conversation, Whitney was still looking at me with an expression of anger and resentment. I decided not to pay her any attention and instead enjoyed the delicious food and took many pictures of my lovely Aurora in her grandfather's arms. It was a peaceful and happy time and it was as though all the hard days I had spent so far were a lie. When we were about to bring the party to a close with our bellies full, Lee announced, I have something for Danny. Oh, what is it? He went to the other room and came back with something hidden behind his back. I was so surprised and happy by how the suddenly announcement was, along with what Lee's actions here implied. Here you go. And he put a pretty paper bag on the table. <laughs> what is this? Is it okay for us to open it? Oh, it's just a little congratulations present for Aurora. He pushed the paper bag on the table toward me. Oh, wow. The wrapping's so cute. Thank you, Lee, so much. To get a present from my husband, who hated the idea of having a daughter so much, this was certainly something unexpected and wonderful. I knew my baby would be adorable in his eyes when he saw her. I was glad he changed his mind about Aurora. I cried with relief and joy. I looked inside the paper bag and saw a chic and stylish black box with a beautiful white ribbon wrapped around it. <laughs> Lovely. And immediately, I excitedly opened the box. And that's when everything plunged into darkness. What the hell is this? The moment I saw what was inside the box, I instantly felt the blood rush away from my face, and my heart began to pound. I quickly closed the box, marched into the kitchen with trembling hands, and threw the whole present in the trash, box and all. Admittedly, this behavior of mine could be construed inappropriate in the eyes of onlookers, but that box held the most despicable message anyone could have ever written. Leo, my father-in-law, who was watching from across the table, jumped to his feet startled and said, What are you doing? You can't throw away my son's present. Lee bought that present for Danny, didn't he? My mother-in-law, who was standing next to me, followed suit with her husband. That's right. What a thing to do. You're disgusting. Meanwhile, my husband was staring at me with the most evil grin I'd ever seen on his face. I tried to keep my voice down. Mr. Spencer, please have a look at what's inside. At my words, my concerned father-in-law picked up the little black box from the trash eyed it for some time, and then opened it up. Then he gasped, and his face turned bright red with fury. What in the name of mighty behemoth is this? What did the black box contain, you ask? Well, it was filled with flowers, but not just any flower. Pure white chrysanthemums. If you don't know, chrysanthemums are considered the flowers of the dead in many cultures around the world. The fact that Lee stuffed a whole lot of flowers into the confines of such a small box goes without saying that he could have been expressing intent of killing his daughter. Contrary to my pale, aghast face, Leo's face turned bright red and he yelled at Lee. What the hell do you think you're doing? What does it look like? It's a present that expresses how I feel about the frickin' baby. Lee said without a trace of an apology. You know what chrysanthemums are used for, don't you? Of course. I'm sending it to Danny with that in mind. I wanted a son. I have no use for a daughter. She's as good as dead, in my book, and that's why I gave her those flowers. He said flatly. Leo's fist went flying, and Lee was knocked to the ground. What the hell, Dad? What was that for? That's my freaking line, you gosh damn son of a bitch. You have no idea what this means to me. 
Leo raised his fist to my husband's face again and again, and it was as though he had gone insane. Whitney, who was watching him in horror, finally snapped back in reality and said, Leo, honey, stop this. Stop this at once. Don't you dare lay a hand on him. Whitney, you shut the frick up. Then, at that moment, she said words that made it seem like time had stopped. I'm sure Lee picked out the perfect present for Danny and her stupid insect. At that moment, Leo's fist suddenly froze. One second seemed to last a whole year, and in the air in the room had become extremely frigid. Then he turned to glare at her, stood up, strode over to her, and slapped her, silently and deadly. Leo, what? Oh my god, you hit me! He muttered under his breath, his voice dangerously quiet. You've gone mad, you swine. Soon after, my daughter started to cry because of the whole commotion. I looked at Lee and Whitney, and all my emotions exploded. I can't take it anymore. I was a fool to think that you had changed your ways after the birth of our child. I can't tell you how much the two of you tormented me during my pregnancy with your ridiculous insults. Why the frick does it have to be a boy? How can you treat such a precious life so disrespectfully? I can no longer be family with you two psychopathic miscreants. I'm divorcing you, Lee. The temperature dropped even more, if that was even possible. My daughter's crying echoed throughout the house. I tried my best to soothe her. Don't be freaking stupid. What the hell do you think you're talking about? You're a woman, damn it. Even if you divorce me, you won't be able to live on your own. That's right. You were born to be a housewife, and now you're going against Lee? The atrocious buffoons didn't care about Aurora's crying and continued to yell at me. Then Leo, who was biting his lip and trying desperately to hold back tears of embarrassment and shame, slammed on the table so hard that both Lee and his mother screamed. Shut the hell up! Or I swear, I will make you shut the hell up. Don't even think about saying anything more that will hurt these two. And, by the way, Whitney, we're done. Danny's completely right. You two are psychopathic miscreants, and I refuse to be family with you pieces of shit. You, Lee, are no son of mine. Whitney's shoulders slumped at her husband's words. You little bitch! You... Leo restrained Lee, who was about to go ballistic with rage. A new strength seemed to have befallen my father-in-law. Lee could do nothing but squirm under his arm, and with both arms around his neck, his breathing became raspy breaths of desperation too. Now, Danny, you must go. We'll discuss the divorce thoroughly later on. Yes, Mr. Spencer. Thank you so much. He nodded. Goodbye, everyone. I promise you I won't let Aurora see you again. I ran out of the house with my daughter in my arms. I made my way home quickly packed only my personal valuables, and made my way to the station, where I got on a train bound for my parents' neighborhood. Later, Leo came to my parents' house with all the divorce documents and apologized to me. My husband's section was already filled out on the papers, and all I had to do was fill them out and submit them. He then told me that I could ask for alimony and child support as well, so I heeded his words and hired a lawyer. I asked for alimony and child support from Lee. The diary I'd kept during my pregnancy was found to be sufficient evidence of moral harassment. Leo also divorced his own wife, just as he declared that afternoon. Having been kicked out of her house and having no place to stay, Whitney went to the apartment where my husband and I used to live and pressured Lee to let her live with him. Leo disowned his son, and he has no one to ask for help in paying alimony. And financially, it seems to be very difficult times for him. He now works for his own company during the day and works part-time as a traffic warden at night. He also started working as a day laborer at a factory on weekends. But a few days ago, his overwork reached its peak, and he collapsed at his day job at his own company and is currently in the hospital. As for Whitney, she is busy working part-time as a janitor and taking care of her son at the same time. On the other hand, I am now able to raise my daughter with the help of my own parents. The smiling face of my beautiful daughter, who is growing little by little every day, supports me and fills me with happiness. I will always protect your smile, darling. And I'll do everything I can to make sure that you live that wonderful life you have ahead of you. I say as I feed my daughter her milk, staring deeply into her twinkling eyes.